Okay, so welcome back. This is the second of the earn value management lessons. So this is lesson number two. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about the estimate at completion forecasting and what could be possible as well as the variance at completion. We're also going to look at the estimate to complete as well as the to complete performance index. We'll look at each of those. Now, if you recall in the first lesson, we had this project and it was about 10 days, right? And we had the project where it would move up in a certain amount of the plan value. That plan value had different increments of what we plan to earn over the length of the project. Now, the total budget at completion, or if we took this cost baseline and spread it from point A to point B, which is the end, then we would have a total budget or expected budget of about $230. Because remember, this was a very simple project that we were using to illustrate this. Then we also looked at, well, if at any point in the project, let's say at the end of day five, what can we forecast or what can we predict? Now, recalling some of the numbers we had in the first lesson, we had an actual cost equal to 170 at this point, an earned value of 160, and a planned value of 140. So that's what we're using from day five. And now we want to use this information to help us predict, or if we had, say, like a big crystal ball, and we were trying to look into that and, and gaze into it and look at all the smoke and try to predict what possibly could happen from now, this point in day five, until the end. And so there's a couple of things to take in mind. One, we already know that the budget at completion is about 230. But based on this new information, because that budget at completion was based on what we planned from point A, or I should say, day one. Now we're looking at it at day five. More information is available. Things have changed. And what does that mean? So there are a few different ways for us to find, then, the estimate of what the budget should be like at completion. A lot of it depends on what variables are available to you and the information that might be found in, say, a project management professional exam question or just in your work experience and the data that you have. A couple of these could be your estimate at completion, could be your budget, which in this case is 230, divided by your cost performance index. Now, the cost performance index we did before, and that was here, about 0.94. So that would be divided by 0.94. Now, since mine, I'm just using fudgy numbers, this may not work, but it could give us a result. But let's take a look at the other equations first. Another equation is to take the actual costs up to this point, plus that budget at completion, subtracting anything that has been earned up to this point. So we've actually spent 170, and the budget at completion was expected to be one, um, 230, and we've already earned 160. So by that measurement, if we were to take, I'll, I'll do a different color here, so 230 minus 160 gives us about 70 left. Okay. And that 70 plus the 170 here equals about 240. Okay, so that's one estimate. Uh, let me use my calculator to find out this one, which would be 230 divided by 0.4 equals oh, about 244. So we're getting different numbers. So let's take 244 here. Granted that, again, this is because I'm using just made up numbers. Uh, any kind of exam question or the data that you might actually get in your work performance is going to be a little bit different. And also, too, remember, I rounded this number to 0.94 in the last lesson, so that's going to also influence what we get. All right, so let's just base it on those. Now, there are a couple other equations that are a little bit more advanced and or acquire some other information, but these two will probably do you well for the exam 
but I do encourage you to look in the PMBOK on page 260. Here, I'll write this down too. 67 for you, and this, is, of course, is the sixth edition of the PMBOK that examines some of the other earn. I'm sorry, the estimate and completion equations. All right, now using that information, though, what does it mean? Well, if let's go with the 240 to keep the math even simpler, it means that now we are expecting that once this project is finished, we're going to have $240 spent. That's our estimate. Now things can change because we're only halfway through the project. We're only here and we're estimating what's going to be like there based on historical information. A lot of things could change, but we're basing it on what we have planned to do over the next few days or months, whatever the time period is. And this is telling us then we have a variance. So a variance at completion would then, of course, just be the difference between these two numbers, what we budgeted versus what we currently are expecting. And then that would mean a negative 10. Uh, because what this is meaning is that we are going to be about $10 over budget than we expected. Now, we can also look at then, okay, well then how much money is estimate mess estimated to complete this project? So using these five days that we have left, how much more money are we expecting to spend? So there's a few equations here that we could use. One could just be, and I'll use a red pen here, is to take this estimate at completion, so the EAC, which is 240, and subtract out anything we've already spent. And that right now is 170. So that is given us a difference of 70. So we're expecting then at this rate with this new estimate, that's going to be about another $70 or $70,000 or whatever value we're using or hours. But uh, let's just go with dollars to keep things nice and simple. We're expecting another $70 to estimate to complete the project. Now, the other thing that we can look at is, well, at what rate do we have to complete the project? So a to complete performance index. So to get to that completion, what kind of rate or clip or, or um, <laughs> ratio do we need to work at in order to meet whatever our target is going to be? So let's go with the example that we still want to try to be under budget or at budget. So using that at budget, you know, budget at completion again, and then subtracting out anything we've earned up to this point, because, you know, we've already earned it, we've already gained it. But let's do a ratio then. If we're taking that budget at completion and what we've already spent, what is that ratio going to be? So we're looking at what we've earned and what we've spent to earn it, comparing it to, as you see here, the BAC, of where we want to be at the end of the project. So in this case, we have 230. Actually, I'll use a black pen so it doesn't mix with our equations. So 230 minus what we've earned up to this point, or <coughs> which is 160. And then again, we're using the budget at completion, 230, and subtracting the 170. So that gives us the two numbers of 70 like we had here and and 60 here. So now doing the equation, I'll bring up my calculator again. We have 70 divided by 60 equals 1.16, let's just say. So 1.166. So what this means is that if we were working as expected, well, we would look at if these were our activities or tasks or if you want to call them work packages, whatever the case might be, we were expecting to get a one-to-one -one ratio. So if we expect to get three done one day, well, we would get three done as planned. But we actually have to get more than what was planned in order to achieve what we are setting out to achieve if we are going to keep everything on budget and on time. So this two complete performance index is giving us some insight that, you know what, we're not even going to have to work at a one-to-one -one ratio. We're almost going to have to work like 66% faster. Like we have um, not just a one-to-one, -one, but 1 1.66 to one. Again, this is a ratio that's going to help us. Now, we can also look at the two complete performance index with using 
our new estimate of completion, which would then equal 1. But probably what we're going to do to or could do in a very big project, now this one, there's not much difference. But you could even have a re-estimated or a new target. So in that case, with the target of the EAC, we're going to still take our budget at completion and what we've, est or we've earned up to this point. I'll get rid of these boxes. And then now instead of using the BAC like we did before, we're going to use the EAC and subtract that based on what we spent. So in this case, then, we are still getting the 70 at the top, but the n bottom number, based on our new, where we're trying to target to our EAC, well, that is going to be 240 minus 170, which is going to equal 70, as like I said, that's going to be a 1. So a 1 to 1 ratio at this point. And then we are going to try to meet and continue to meet this and not make it any better or worse we're just gonna go towards that target so this is where you would use if you have a new milestone or a new target in which to reach and you are then calculating towards that new target and you can fluctuate that number based on the efficiency needed based on what's approved and what is um, desirable by the organization and maybe even the sponsor but two different ways to look at the two perform two complete performance index depending if you're using the original budget or a new estimated budget at completion so that is a quick lesson number two to complete the overall earn value management as part of the crowd training and the pm city lessons